Hello and welcome to Santa Pod and the first round of the FIA European Drag Racing Championship. And plus, it's also round number two for the UEM Drag Bike Championship in 2010. Absolutely right, but in this particular programme, we are featuring the top methanol funny cars. And their dragster counterparts, the top methanol dragsters. As well as the top fuel bikes. And of course, those awesome hot rods the pro mods are here 200 plus miles an hour from door slammers wow amazing stuff now the weather is on our side but you can tell it is a little bit windy it promises to be a great weekend this is the part of the program i love the best i'm a hot rodder at heart these are the pro mods Well, welcome to Pro Modifieds in 2010. I'm Daryl Bradford. This is the qualifying list for Pro Mod. Number one is Johan Lindberg, the rock star man from Sweden. Number two, Graham Ellis. Great run for him. Number three, Andy Robinson. So two Brits mixing up with one Swede in the top three. But before we get to the racing action, John Price is down on the starting line and has caught up with a very special international visitor. This is Melanie Troxell. Melanie, welcome to Great Britain. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? Oh, this is a beautiful facility. Everyone has been so welcoming coming by to stop in and see us. Uh, it's been a little hectic getting the car here. It wasn't here quite in time, but uh, we've made one run out there. We're having a great time and we're looking forward to some more racing. Michael, now you've driven this car that Melanie is now driving, but you, of course, have made history by winning a race in America. Your thoughts on Melanie being here? I think it's great that uh, they come over here and race with us, it, it's just fantastic. So uh, I'm too having a good time and uh, just enjoying it right now. So well, It's the battle of the sexes here, isn't it? I mean, male against female. I mean, do you see yourself managing to overcome this young lady with your car? Uh, that's a hard one, uh, but I'd certainly try, you know. And Melanie, what's your thoughts here? Um, is he going to beat you? Is the male going to be dominant here in the hot rods? Well, I tell you what, he's done such a fabulous job when he's come over to the U.S. and driven for us. Uh, he supported our team very well, and that's what we wanted to do was to come over and support him. But he's come over twice. He's got a runner-up and a win. So uh, I think it's time for me to come back and, and repay the favor and beat up on him a little bit. Well, Melanie beating up on Michael. I'd like to be Michael Quist for a day, I think, wouldn't you guys? Anyway, Pro Modified Cars, a lot of work takes place in these cars on the pit area. That's where we are now. This car is a UK-based car. The driver is Andy Robinson. Been up for the championship a number of years now. Let's just get some thoughts for him on 2010. With all that success Michael Gulquist has had in America, I have read somewhere that you are of the opinion he might be sort of sought by some of the other racers? Oh yeah, doing what he did and running fives in a, in a borrowed car, you know, there's a big target on his back and uh, we're, we're going for him. All of you or just you? Oh no, it'll be the whole class. <laughs> he doesn't really stand much of a chance, does he? <laughs> well, they don't, I have one on my back when I'm leading, so why should he be any different? Well, Andy Robinson sounding very, very excited indeed, but uh, he's a very tough competitor. I'm joined here by John Price in the commentary box for this section of the programme. John, Andy Robinson, one tough competitor. Well, he is, yeah, of course, and lost out, if you remember, at the finals last year. Uh, it was a three or a four horse race at that time, and Andy was the one who lost out, finished up in the number three position in the championship last year, uh, behind Mats Eriksson and Mickey Gouldquist. So, um, interesting to see what is going to happen for 2010. Well, this is the first round race, the first time Melanie Troxell is in competition. That's her in the Camaro in the near lane. Beautiful, beautiful car, isn't it? Indeed, Absolutely it is. Stunning. Fantastic graphic work. Like we said, that car has previously been driven by car owner Roger Burgess to a win at the US Nationals. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got some pedigree. And Mickey Gorkris has actually driven that one as well, hasn't he? He certainly was. Up against Adam Flamholt. Now, we can't discount Adam at all. This car was uh, a car raced in the States. He bought it in the States and drummed very, very quick indeed. Both the way very, very evenly together. Oh, lots of shaking absolutely everywhere for Melanie Troxell. It's going to be Adam Flamholt taking the wing, knocking out the American star in the first round. Look at that. The team absolutely elated with that win. Well, it was exciting anyway. Isn't that what they say? If you can't win, be exciting. Uh, I think this is where you guys would say, oh, bugger over here, you know? 
that uh, we never did quite get a handle on the early part of the track and um, I've had to pedal it every run and that time we just got the car a little sideways when I pedaled it and it was hard to recover from it. Finally did it get it hooked back up and I was tracking him down but we just didn't have enough enough racetrack to get it done. Well, half mile racetracks aren't invented yet, unfortunately, for drag racing, but I know what Melanie Choxall means. It must be so frustrating to shake the tyres and not be able to run the other guy down. This is the next pair. This is going to be a great race too, John. Well, it is, isn't it? And, of course, this just reinforces what I always say about these cars. These are the hot rods, aren't they? Here we've got a Corvette coming. That's Marco Murashat coming up against the 57 Bel Air of Mickey Goldquist, the man who's done so well in America, actually winning for the first time ever an NHRA event. And away he goes, and uh, no time for Marco Murashat at all. I wonder what went on there. Well, it looks like Mickey takes the win on a walk over there. We put some new stuff on there to step it up a bit for this uh, fierce competition in, in this field. So. We needed to go some faster and uh, we put uh, stuff on to do it and uh, we had some few, I had a few leak so uh, I didn't realize before I was in the middle of the track and my windshield was sprayed on with some fuel and you know I was uh, hesitating to, to go but I didn't see Marco so I had to you know put my foot back, back into it again. And well, Mickey Goodquist could always drive a race car before he went to the US, but that just proved it, obviously, winning over in the USA in Atlanta. Marco Mario Schatt, great shame for him. He ran down into the six ones at the end of 2009, so it looked very good for him coming into this season. What a shame. Every race in round one of Pro Mod, uh, well, could be the final. This is Urban Johansson and Matt Eriksson, John. Yeah, indeed. And, of course, uh, Matt Eriksson, our uh, existing champion now in Pro Modified. Urban Johansson previous champion in that split window Corvette. These were our number five for Mats and 12 qualifier for Urban Johansson. So in the Pro Modified qualifying, there's hardly anything to choose between any of them. And they were away, almost like synchronized drag racing. Whoa, that was close. Mats Ericsson just took the win, a 6.38 to a 6.40. Well, they were pedalling, they were driving, they were pedalling. You could see the butterflies on the front of the cars opening and shutting all the time. And it was just by the skin of his green goblin teeth, <laughs> Mats Ericsson taking the win. It is. But here we go. Look, hot rods again. Look, you, you've got to appreciate what you're looking at here. An absolutely wonderful Badillac Cadillac, of course, in the hands of Jan Gunnarsson. Now, he was our number 14 qualifier, but he comes up against the 53 Studi Baker commander of Great Britain's Andy Robinson. Now, two more diverse cars you couldn't get. There's only one of each of these racing in European drag racing. Jan Gunnarsson stunned them all at the Vedek Festival at Mantua Park last summer, got all the way to the final round against that Green Goblin, which we just saw a moment ago. That final never got run. Andy Robinson has a bit of a history against people qualifying low and then coming up to bite him in round one. But it is Andy Robinson with a near perfect reaction time, a 0-5. Jan Gunnarsson chasing him down. Wow, he made a race of that, didn't he? Andy Robinson takes the win, 6-11 to 6-04 for that huge aircraft carrier of a bad luck. Amazing stuff, but Andy gets there first. You're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were a bit concerned about the car. We had a couple of cylinders that were a bit oily and we were a bit nervous. Um, but I always like to kill the guys on the tree anyway. Um, and I didn't see him. Um, and I waited a little bit and I saw a good orange. So I don't know what the reaction is yet, if I'm honest. Well, a win is a win. And Andy Robinson takes that win on a whole shot. That is the best way to win if you are a driver. You know you did your job better than the guy in the other lane. But a 6.04 from that Cadillac is staggering. Our next pair again, two completely unique cars, John. Yeah, indeed. Two. Well, of course, you've got the Plymouth Superbird uh, on the opposing lane, but you've got this anniversary Corvette coloured machine here of Marco Lanto. Marco was our number 15 qualifier, but the Superbird here in the hands of Graham Ellis, our number two qualifier, running for the first time in the team's history as 6-0, 6, -0, 6 -0 absolutely superb and of course the car built by Andy Robinson at Robinson race cars well it is so low as well I always say when it was painted matte black if you saw it on tarmac you weren't looking where you're going you'd trip over it because it was so low yeah but, but you would I would yes because yeah, you're only small yeah but you'd walk it. 
<laughs> anyway, into the stage means and Graham Ellis oh. unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree, puts himself out before he even gets to the other end. Marco Lanto in a surprise easy win, 658, 228, doesn't matter at all for Graham Ellis. 882, you wouldn't believe that would have taken the win, would you? No, indeed. So Marco Lanto moves on into the next round and uh, much work being undertaken in all of these pits. There is so much work to do. This, they do almost as much work in a pro mod pit as they do with the top fuel pit. You know, stripping the engines down, examining the clutches, the transmissions all the time. Well, you're dead right there. And the reason is because obviously it's a door car. There's so many more moving and working components. Whereas in a dragster, it's just obviously the engine and the drivetrain they have to take care of. With these cars, there's suspension, there's wheelie bars, all the other stuff that have to be looked after. But so far this weekend, the star of the show, he is a rock star. Johan Lindbergh in that fantastic 68 Firebird up against another Firebird of Thea Hawkinson from Norway. And they're both moving forward into stage. Neither of them want to go in by the looks of it. Well, I tell you what, the uh, Lindbergh Rockstar team have been in the 6 zeros all weekend. So consistent. And uh, if the opponent wants to beat him, he's really got to turn the wick up, but he doesn't. Look at that. Johan Limbo takes the win. Another 6 0. 6 0 4, 236 miles per hour. Pro mod bracket racing. How good is that? Yeah. But Johan Limburg cut his teeth in the Scandinavian top door slammer series. This time he stepped up big time into the world of FIA Pro Modified. That 6 0 he ran in qualifying was his quickest run ever by a bunch. So that gets him a date with Roger Johansson in round two. Mickey Lindell against Max Ericsson. Marco Lento against Adam Flamholk. And our very last pairing is Andy Robinson against Mickey Gilchrist. That's going to be good. Yeah, indeed. So we kick off with the Lindahl Ericsson show. And of course, Mickey Lindahl, um, the crew chief on there, is his twin brother. And they are so alike, those two, aren't they? And when you get them talking, <laughs> run for cover. Yeah, you can't, you can't stop it. What is it about Swedish brothers? They've got the Leanders brothers, the Lindberg brothers, yep. and uh, the Lindahl, well, the Lindahls are twins. Um, so they're, they're obviously a little bit more unique. But this is a previous championship winning car. Both of these actually, Matt Ericsson is number one for this season. He won the championship and he was the first ever into the fives. He ran a 5.98 in qualifying at the European finals last year. Up against Mickey Lindau. Now Mickey Lindau, unfortunately, has been kind of eclipsed by some of the other Swedish racers recently. And I'm sure they want to get back on top this year. Well, remember that Matt's was our number five qualifier here and Mickey Lindau out number 13 but coming into this round both of these guys ran in the six threes but you have to remember of course that Matt's is a 590 pilot so what's happening here it's Matt's all the way through what a cracking run for him that green goblin really really on form yeah he takes the win with a 6-0 against Mickey Lindau's tie shaking 6-1 Matt's is through to the semis again OK, next pair up and coming then. And this is uh, Adam Flamholt with his beautiful Camaro SS. I mean, it's in original Camaro colours with the stripes going over the bodywork. Whoever would have thought that 40 years later, this quintessential American muscle car will still be strutting its stuff on a drag strip. And strutting its stuff at 240 miles <laughs> an hour. Yeah. Adam Flamholt, the conqueror of Melanie Troxel in round one, was due to race. Marco Lanto from Finland, but Marco unfortunately damaged the car in that win over the red lighting Graham Ellis. So Adam's through into the semi-final. No matter what happens, he still must be very happy. Adam, great news that you are through to the semi-finals where you'll be facing Andy Robertson. But just before we go on to that, let's take you back in the first round of eliminations when you were actually against Melanie. So how did that go? Because first female, first American driver here at Santa Pod. Well, uh, she's a famous driver and, and uh, she's a good driver. Well, indeed she is, but I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this race. Here we go. The hot rods again. 57 Chevy Bel Air. That's Mickey Gullquist. And then the 53 Studi Baker Commander of Great Britain's Andy Robinson. The numbers two and three in the championship last year. And uh, Mickey Gullquist, of course, having had that win in America, suddenly became the target for everybody. He had a big target on his back anyway, <laughs> being number two in the championship. Andy Gus, as we call him, Robinson, 
Uh, had a bit of breakage during qualifying. Car seems to hurt itself when it goes through the finish line for some reason. But up against Mickey Gorquist, this is going to be a classic, classic drag race. These two have battled it out all across Europe many times. And the light goes green. And Andy Robinson with a near perfect reaction time. Let's see if Mickey Gorquist can track him down. No, he doesn't. Five hundredths of a second advantage off the line was what Andy Robinson needed to take the win over the Atlanta winner. Two six twelves on the board, but only one winner. Andy Robinson, Mickey Gorkus must be gutted. Well, I was, you know, I didn't count on on winning this race. It's a hard, hard thing to uh, get get my own car running good, and and uh, we really tried to speed it up a bit, and we. We were successful, I think. We got it running pretty good in the end, and uh, we just needed some more time. But, uh, I mean, Andrew Robinson left me. He, he made it like a 2,000 seconds reaction time, so, you know, I, I needed to be on my, my game there. And I, I didn't li leave very late, and, and the course ran uh, both 6-12, so I think it was a real good race, so. Well, worth looking at again. You can see the start line advantage for Andy Robinson away from Mickey Gorkis there, and that was what got it for him at the line. Yeah, that was a little close, actually. It was a 002 light, so uh, normally when someone does that to me, I say that's a slow red, So, but I did see orange. But no, it's, it's good. It's once again another round, and that's what we have to do, keep building rounds. Yeah. Andy Robinson being very moist. Just take a look at that. You can see his car clearly moved before Mickey Gorkis. That is what drag racing is all about, thousands of a second. If Andy Robinson hadn't have done that, he wouldn't be in the semi-finals. OK, well, here's our next pair. And uh, this is a good mix of cars because in pro mod drag racing, you have two different types of cars. One is the supercharged methanol burning engine and the other is, as enclosed within this blue Mustang, a huge nitrous oxide assisted engine. And that engine is somewhere around about 14 litres, but with nitrous oxide, well, both these cars, well in excess of 2,000 horsepower. It puts Johan Lindbergh against previous champion Roger Johansson, and between them on their qualifying, quite a bit of difference in actual fact, but we know Roger Johansson from old, and he's quite a wily racer, isn't he? Well, indeed he is a wily racer, to say the least. Now, they both go into pre-stage, and they're both sat there looking at each other. Yep. Uh, Johan Lindbergh just sits there, revving the engine in the Rockstar car, finally goes into full stage. There goes Roger as well. Slight reaction time advantage to Roger Johansson, but then it's all Johan Lindbergh with that big top-end charge on the Firebird. Once again, a great run for them. Down in the 6 zeros, a 6 0 one getting so close to the fives. And uh, his family, the crew, everybody so happy with that. And Roger Johansson uh, bows out in round two. Well, it just shows you consistency really does matter, doesn't it? So that sets up our semis. Uh, Johan Lindbergh against Mats Eriksson. Adam Flamholt against Andy Robinson. Uh, two races very well worth seeing. So here we go. Big crowd here, of course at Sandapod for the main event. And isn't this a, a very, very smooth aerodynamic looking Pontiac Firebird? I had a Firebird and it wasn't that, wasn't that aerodynamic, I've got to tell you. Well, aerodynamic and rough to run six zeros the whole time. That's pretty quick to say the least. Johan Limbo, like we said, the Rockstar sponsored race car up against Matt Ericsson. Now, Matt is another one of these chassis building drag racers, Andy Robinson, builds race cars as well. Matt's built his own car, this beautiful, beautiful 56 Crown Victoria. Again, as we said before, Europe's first ever five second door slam, a 5.9. Can you believe door cars running five seconds? I know, it's beyond, beyond belief. But here we go. Now then, Matt knows that so far this weekend, he hasn't ventured towards a five, and the rock star car of Johan Limburg has been on the six zeros right the way through. Matt's knows he's got to do something really extreme here. Oh, and he does the wrong type of extreme. Goes too quick with a red light. Johan Limburg with another nice, easy, straight, effortless 601. The reason I say that so much, he really has been on a rail this weekend. Matt Eriksson chucks it all away with a red light on the tree. The Limburg boys have never been this far in uh, FIA European competition, but this time they're going to be going into their first ever final. 
I was real aggressive there, but a little too fast. I don't know how much, but I think it's a little, little, maybe some thousands. Uh, that looked like a lot more than a thousands too quick, I hate to say, Mats. He really did anticipate the light there. Mats is a great drag racer. Uh, just a shame for us that we didn't get the side-by-side 6-0 -side that we all desperately wanted to see. But Johan Lindbergh, all the same, moves into his first ever final. So uh, the next race in the semis is John. Yeah, it is uh, Adam Flamholk and this man, Andy Robinson. And uh, this is going to be uh, an interesting race between these two. Uh, if you remember, uh, Flamholk got into this race uh, as a result of uh, Marco Lanto not putting in an appearance. And uh, Andy Robinson really had the race of his life against Mickey Goldquist and pulled the most remarkable reaction time for a pro mod driver, 0 0.002. Well, for any driver, that's a fantastic reaction time. I'm mentioning reaction times. The reason Andy Robinson is in the semi-finals is purely as a result of his driving. A big hole shot on Jan Gunnarsson in round one. That hole shot we just saw against Mickey Gorquist in round two. So it's it's not all down to him. Obviously, the crew have to set the car up as well. But a large part of drag racing is that start line reaction. So let's see what he can pull out against Adam. Yeah, here we go then. Up into the staging beams once more. Start to build up the revs, yay! And it is Andy Robinson just by two hundredths of a second who gets out the traps first, but a lot of smoke coming out of the Robinson race car, Studi Baker. Ooh, that doesn't look so good, does it? Well, the number of 611 doesn't really go with that speed, only 221 miles an hour. He stayed in it longer than he probably wanted to, just because he wanted to get the wind light, but a lot of death smoke, if you like, at the top end for Andy. Well, the crowd there sitting, uh, waiting to see what goes on. But it is now, it's the final. And it is Johan Lindbergh against Andy Robinson. But the sad news is that Andy has not made the final. You were so right in what you saw that that was uh, terminal damage for the Studebaker commander. Yeah, well, Andy and the crew worked very, very hard indeed to get it fixed. It's not the first time this weekend they had that problem. For some reason, from around about a 1,000 foot on, which is just before the finish line, uh, the car seemed to emit that death smoke a number of times. He had a bit of an oil down in qualifying, which was a real shame. First time I can ever remember that happened for a Robinson race cars team. And unfortunately, it means that the UK don't get represented in the final. It is Johan Lindbergh on his own. Now, just a bit about these guys. Like I said, came from Top Doors Hammer Racing in Scandinavia. It's Johan Lindbergh. He's in his mid-20s. His brother, Johnny, is the crew chief. Johnny is only just in his 20s as well. Comes racing with all of his family. And let's see if he can pull out a five on his last run of the day. He's trying. Certainly is trying. Unfortunately, a bit of tyre shake. Uh, did that in, but he still wins the event. His first ever FIA win with a 6-0-4. That's Johnny Lindbergh, his brother, and all the crew on the Rockstar team so happy to win their first ever event. Was it a little bit disappointing that you didn't have Andy Robson to compete against? Yeah, yeah, that, that's sad because you want to, to, to raise the, the win, so. Well, Johan Lindbergh, eventually that ended up becoming a victory lap for him, but he was in the 6-0s all weekend and a fantastic first ever outing for that race car. That just about wraps it up for Pro Modified, but we've still got loads to come. Well, you may think that this is a top fuel dragster, but there is one thing missing from this combination. It's a supercharger. There's no supercharger on here. This engine is running on nitromethane, but it runs in the top methanol dragster class, and that's our next class. Well, this is the top methanol part of this show. The qualifying list for top methanol dragster, Fred Hansen from Norway up there at number one. Christian Hansen in at number eight with a 5.52. That's a nigh on record bump spot. They were very quick this weekend. Those are the first round pairings as they look, but the first pair we're gonna see is Dave Wilson against Timo Harberman. Yeah, indeed, and of course, Dave Wilson, many times top methanol dragster champion. Change of form for him though, when he moved from a blown methanol engine to an A fueler. Yeah, well the A fuelers potentially can run quicker, but they're much, much more difficult to get a handle on. And uh, Dave, I know, has lots of thoughts on that. 
Last year we were getting there, we finished second. This year we hope to do better, obviously. And you really got a handle on it now? I wouldn't ever say that, but uh, we had a handle on it last year to some extent. We managed to run for a quicker record, both in speed and ET, so we hope to take up where we left off. Dave is understated as ever. We don't know whether we've got a handle on it, but we set the ET in speed record. I'd say that's pretty <laughs> good, wouldn't you, John? I would think so, yeah, indeed. But uh, here we go, and it's Timo Haberman, the young German, uh, just 26 years of age, Timo. And coming up against Dave Wilson, Timo is the existing champion. And uh, Timo cracks off a 0-4 reaction time and takes a win. Dave Wilson ran a 5.56, but it wasn't good enough. It was a 5.32 for Timo. The existing champion is through into the next round. Well, if you get reaction times like that and good runs, fairly unstoppable, I would think. There is a reason he is the defending European champion. He won a number of races like that last year. Uh, when the car wasn't running quite so good, he made up with it for his driving. And uh, the other way around, the car ran good. And uh, at the same time, he was nothing but good. So our next pair. Yeah, well, it is. It's another one of those A fuelers. This time, there's Gary behind him. It's Derek Flynn from Great Britain. And he's coming up against another one of these Norwegian drivers, Paul Inger Utian. Now, Paul was our number six qualifier. But Derek Flynn did very well running down in the five fours into the number three spot. Well, that was his quickest ever run in Europe, a 5.42. Derek has been refining his art in the US. Uh, driving Larry Mercy's car, tuned by Jim Rizzoli. He did really, really well. Ran very fast over there, but this is the quickest ever times for the Gold RV gang over here in the UK. Now, supercharged Methylo against Injected, and it's Paul Inger away first. You can clearly see the advantage for the supercharged car, but Derek Flynn, the mighty power of that A fuel car. Another personal best. 5.35, 271 miles an hour, a huge speed. It was, but you may have noticed that the car just kept going. And uh, poor Derek didn't deploy the chutes, or the chutes didn't deploy, and he ended up doing his Farmer Giles impression right down the other end. Yeah, he was actually uh, just, he just nipped into the field, if you like, but uh, unfortunately the chutes didn't deploy properly. Derek pulled them and nothing was happening, so by the time he realised it was a little bit too late and he was in the field, but he's still in the semis, that's the most important thing for them. Sure, indeed. Right, well, next pair, it's two drivers from Germany side by side. It's the other Haberman, this is the younger of the Habermans, Dennis, uh, coming up against long-time, many-time champion in European top methanol dragster driving. It is, of course, Peter Schofer, and... Uh, Peter was our number two qualifier here this weekend, but Dennis, who's now running the same engine as his brother, was a number seven qualifier. Well, qualifying matters not when it comes to race day. Both are very even. A massive hole shot for Dennis Haberman there. What a race. Look at that right at the finish line. Dennis takes him on that hole shot. 5.47 to 5.43. He's into the next round. So depending on how the semi-final goes, it could be an all Harbourman um, final. Yeah, it could be. So we're just happy that we won the first round. We made a lot of changes on the cars and now we got both exactly the same engines. And we are so happy that everything works now. I ran a 5.32 and... That's really close to your personal best, isn't it, Timo? Yeah, the personal best was 5.31 last year, the finals. And we just put that engine, what I ran, the 5.31, we put it for spare in the trailer and... So now we have changed the whole combination and that's just great. Well, it's working. And for you, Dennis, you weren't so pleased with your time, but you had an amazing reaction time. Yeah, I know. Um, I was on a number seven qualified and I was driving against the second qualified and I, I, I needed to have a good reaction time, what I actually have all the time. But yeah, I, I took the, the win by a whole shot. So. Well, another man in top methanol dragster is very, very tough indeed. Christy Johansson from Sweden got to the final at last year's European final, so he's looking for more in 2010. Christa, tell me, when did you start drag racing? I started 1971, actually, and uh, my first race here was 72. So that's a long, long time. What keeps you involved with the sport? Well, all the friendly people, uh, Good racing and, uh, well, I like it, the mechanical part of it and the uh, challenge. Years ago, everybody, all the Brits used to fear Christy Johansson. And you want, you want to get it back to that again? 
Well, <laughs> it's uh, they say it's uh, expensive to be poor because <laughs> I don't have a lot of money. I, I can raise with the, with the money I can scramble. I mean, it's it's tough and uh, try the best of it. Well, Krista running that A fuel combination, which means injected but on nitro-methane. The supercharged cars can only run methanol. It kind of evens them out as well, and it makes for great racing, doesn't it, John? Yeah, indeed. Well, they're both producing the same sort of horsepower, which I find incredible, that you can so finely tune these different types of engines and get the same sort of horsepower out of it. And certainly, uh, with Christy Johansson, our number eight qualifier, but running 552, Fred Hansen was our number one man, but running 539. So that means there's just 13 hundredths of a second between the number one qualifier and the number eight qualifier. That is quite extraordinary. It is amazing as well. And don't count Krista out as well because he ran down into the five threes where Fred Hansen is at the moment yep. at the European finals last year. He got all the way to the final. Now Fred Hansen is tuned by American guru, if you will, Will Hanna. Now Will has been over here with Fred for last season. They had some great, great runs, but this year they're trying to make a really strong run at the title so expect a really quick run from Fred Hansen but don't ever count Krista out oh absolutely so much experience in that man start line reactions oh almost identical a 0 0.09 for Fred Krista 0.10 but it is Fred who takes the win goodness me that was close 5.30 to a losing 5.45 what an absolutely cracking race no wonder the crew are just so very, very happy. Let's get some words from the victor. That's Fred Hansen. It was very windy, looks like, but the car was going everywhere. But uh, no tire shake, so I go through it and uh, yeah, it was very fast. So you meet one of the Habermans in the next round. Does that frighten you at all? Uh, not now, <laughs> because I think I, I have a faster time than him. He had 32, I have 30. So, uh, of course, he's good. He's quick on the tree. He uh, was number one last year and was in almost every finals. So, of course, he's the favorite. Well, the racing in top methanol drags, it really is world class. The two guys that are running against each other there, Fred Hansen and Timo Haberman, both running the 5.3s, one with a 5.30, one with a 532. So the other Haberman boy is up against the A fuel car of Derek Flynn. Only one of those left standing this afternoon at Santa Pod, John. It's all blown cars and one A fuel car. Yeah, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because uh, uh, I wonder whether we get the Habermans coming through into the final. It's always one of those things where uh, everybody in the racetrack would like it to happen, but then they're not certain what it's going to be like if you get brother against brother. You know, it's one of those strange things. But uh, let's just see. Timo Haberman then, the existing champion, taking on our number one qualifier this weekend, Fred Hansen. And don't forget, Fred got through to this round, as he said, with a 5.30. Timo with a 5.32. And this, again, is going to be on start line reactions because Timo is absolutely red hot on the lights. Well, so that's going to be, I think, the answer to this. When the cars are running so close together, start line reaction is so important. Indeed it is. And that was Will Hanna, the tuner for Fred Hansen, guiding him back uh, into his burnout tracks. As we always say, the reason they producer burnout is not just for show it really is to lay down a nice new sticky tap of rubber on the start line both these guys very good very experienced Fred Hansen actually it was his first year ever in top methanol drags the last year team I believe it or not even though he's in his mid-20s has been there for a number of years now so it could well be all down to that Christmas tree who leaves the green quickest there Here we, we go, go. <laughs> and the answer's right away, it's Timo. Yeah. Look at that, you could visibly see the car move before Fred Hansen, and that was all it took. A 5.33 for Timo, 5.37, not too shabby at all for Fred Hansen, but that reaction time advantage was blatant, wasn't it, John? Yeah, indeed. Well, there's Werner Haberman, of course, the, uh, the daddy, the big daddy um, of the Haberman uh, dynasty, but it's certainly Timo is through. No pressure on Dennis then, I suppose. Not much at <laughs> all. Uh, Dennis could definitely do it. Up against Derek Flynn. Here he is. That's Dennis Haberman over there in the Unifit Dragster. Very smart looking cars, those. And also of mention as well is they are the quickest and fastest cars in the world 
with an older style Whipple type supercharger. You can run a PSI or a Whipple if you've got a blown car. They run a Whipple and they're so much quicker than everybody else, which is very impressive. Up against Derek Flynn uh, with a Go Gold RV crew. Derek comes from uh, Hampshire in the UK and uh, they run a very, very successful American motorhome business they do down indeed. there. Mm. Now on their, on their numbers from the round before, it looks like Derek Flynn, providing he doesn't go farming, should actually take this. But, uh, well, never Who count knows? anyone out, John. Yeah, indeed, Derek was a 5.35. Dennis getting through was a 5.47. So once again, the Habermans just seem to have this slight edge with their reaction times. Let's just watch what goes on here. Both cars in the... My goodness me, it was almost a perfect reaction time, a point zero 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 one for Dennis Haberman. And we've got the brothers reunited in the final. Well, we have Dennis runs a great 5.46 but it was that reaction time that got it for him Derek almost ran him down but did again run out of racetrack the good news was though the parachute came out this time so it's the two brothers in the final yeah all the time it was a dream now the dream came true we are both in the final and it doesn't matter who will win now the Habermann racing will win we have two cars in Europe and in just one team we have 10 mechanics for two cars and we are both in the finals, so yeah. we are so just so happy. Well, I tell you what, uh, Werner Haberman was almost in tears there when that interview was ongoing. His two boys have made it through into the final, and uh, this is going to be one the crowd really are going to enjoy. The two Haberman brothers, could it be? They have raced together in the past. Many times. Many actually. times, but it's usually Timo who comes out on top, isn't well, it? Well, the races that they've had before have been absolutely cracking races. One I remember around one last year in Alistaro. Uh, Timo won by virtue of a whole shot, I think. It was very, very close. They absolutely give nothing away to each other. And uh, Timo won the championship last year, but his brother really did try and do everything he could <laughs> to stop him, yes. if you will. So the final... Timo's won, obviously, the championship before. He's won events before. Dennis has never quite got that far. He has qualified and done quite well. He's never taken a main event win, or an FIA win, for that matter. I tell you what, the, the man that I feel a little bit for here is their dad. Because, of course, he can't possibly uh, give more applause to one brother than the other. So he's got to really remain right in the middle of the two of them. It must be really, really tricky. And keep... Uh, an overall brief on the way both of these cars are running. So it's going to be interesting, this. The two German brothers coming up side by side. Will, last year's champion, the older of the two Haberman brothers, take out the younger, as is the form book with this? Well, these guys are going to go for it. They really are going to race. Uh, even though they both have the same engine combinations, they have different chassis built by different chassis builders. So there are slight tweaks with each car that are slightly different. Timo's has been around about a tenth of a second faster than Dennis's all weekend. Dennis is in the black car in the near lane. Timo in the orange, white and red car over there. And both the way, and look at that once again. Dennis straps a massive hole shot on his brother. Timo can't run him down. It's going to be Dennis. Well, pick your Haberman, whichever Haberman you like, and it's going to be Dennis. Let's have a quick look at the numbers. But uh, Dennis took the win with a great, great hole shot. 5.48 to 5.37 for Timo. He was really asleep on the line there. I don't think he gave that to his brother at all. Uh, a big party, I think, for the Haberman boys, the family, the whole team. And it's going to be uh, a proper hangover for them tomorrow morning, I'm sure. The, the win is in the Haberman family, the, se the first and the second win. So, wow, I'm really happy. Oh, what a good brother, Timo. I mean, he is quick now. He's really the man to watch in um, Top Methanol Dragsters. His reaction time, isn't it, Timo? It's just it's so good. Yeah, that was the thing why he won. So I had the better car all the weekend. But Dennis is absolutely the best driver on the weekend on the whole classes. Well, how nice is that to see Timo giving full credit to his brother. Timo did have the quicker car, but Dennis with a whole shot off the start line and just a half a car length between them at the finish line, 5.48 to 5.37. Brothers in arms for the whole weekend. You know, when you think about road-going motorcycles, 130 horsepower is really, really quite strong. The next class up, they've got something like 1,200 horsepower at their disposal. It's Top Fuel Bike. Well, qualifying for Top Fuel Bike looked like this. 
Steve Wooler out there at number one. Number two was Kai Selkemer, then René Vandenberg, Steve Carey, and Eric Tabal from France. Real mix of nationalities in with this over this weekend. Steve Wooler gets a bye into the semi-finals where he'll race Steve Carey. Kai Selkemer gets a bye due to beating Eric Tabal in round one so i think it's going to be to that indeed it is there steve Willat just climbing on this monster machine john just a few facts and figures on these bikes it really does boggle the mind doesn't it just even the horsepower alone well indeed to be strapped across one of these machines is not for the faint-hearted I, I would hate even to contemplate getting aboard one of these motorcycles well in excess of a thousand horsepower and these machines, you lay on them, you don't steer them, you just you aim them with your body weight. So it's, it's almost like being in a sidecar outfit, but without having a sidecar to be in. So that they are quite extraordinary machines. And of course, this year is the first time that they are now running in top fuel bike, all as top fuel bikes. In the past, They've mixed and matched with the funny bikes. Indeed they have as well. And uh, Steve Willer, a long-time campaigner in Top Fuel Bike in the UK, up against Steve Carey. It's a two four-cylinder nitro machines lining up on the start line here at Santa Pod. Oh, Steve Willer, a great lead. Look at that bike rocket away to half track. He's going to take that all the way through. Big, big win there for Steve Willett. But Steve Carey, no disgrace at all. 6.99, 185, 6.65. The 179 mile an hour speed for the dealer showed that he actually clipped that off way, way early. But most importantly for him, he is in the final. Indeed. Uh, it's always been my thing with Steve. I've known Steve for so long now. I mean, he was uh, around racing when I uh, first came to drag racing, was that if he could get a really good sponsor, he would do fantastically in the European race, you know, in uh, the battle over Europe, because he is a good, consistent runner. He's very good indeed, very consistent. This is, just to say, this is the other semi-final. It's a bye run after Kai Selkema put away Eric Tabool in round one. He got a bye in the semi-final due to the odd locked field and uneven even number of bikes that were entered. And he just trickles through with a 14 second run, but he's saving the bike for the final. He was our winner in Hungary as well, Kai He Selkema. was, he did very, very well indeed. Very nice young man from Finland, but uh, now comes up against the might that is Steve Woollett. And Steve this weekend really has been very, very consistent indeed. Qualified number one with a 7-0, but then ran a 660, a 665. So what are we going to see here in the final? Certainly Kai Selkema is going to have to try and turn the wick up a little bit on his machine. He qualified with a 7.11 and hasn't been tested since then. Eric Tapal didn't show up in the first round and Kai Selkema got a bye in the second round. So let's see how we go. Final time. Well, Kai Selkema was in the sixes in Hungary. Hasn't been there yet so far this weekend here at Santa Pod. They both nudge forward into the beams. Kai Selkema, a real, does get a long distance award from coming from Finland. Steve Willett, local boy, and they both leave together. That's a lot more like what we expect to see top fuel bike. Very close indeed, but it's Steve Willett out in front, clicks it off just before the finish line. But a great win for him, 6.68, and a personal best for Kai Selkema, 6.89. But it's Steve Willett that takes the round win. Steve, we spoke to Kai just before that final. He was quite confident, thinking that young, fresh blood was going to take the experienced guy, but you had him right at the starting line. Yeah, well, you know, thought did. There's no uh, substitute for uh, age and experience, you know. We're on our home track here, and we're going to defend it to the end. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Steve, you weren't so pleased with the time, were you? But a win's a win. Can you now improve on that going forward? Yeah, we can build on this. We're a bit disappointed with our numbers, but, you know, it's we haven't had a lot of track time this year, but, you know, we're working on it. Well, numbers don't win drag races, win lights do. And Steve Willett, those bikes are absolutely planted all the way up the quarter mile there. Kai Selkem is still probably in the lead in the UEM Championship, but for this weekend, it was Steve Willett and the dealer from the UK. This class is not for the faint-hearted. Not only is it a white-knuckle ride, but it's also extremely claustrophobic. Next up, it's the Top Methanol Funny Cars. Now, Ulf, it's great to see you at the main event here at Santa Pod, but you're here without your car. Why? Yeah, unfortunately, we have the car in America right now. We went there over the winter. We made one race over there, and uh, 
Now we actually decided to leave it there to do uh, maybe three or four races in America this year. And is, is that the dream? Is it stepping up to the big time almost being in the States? Of course it's a dream to go to, the, to a couple of big events in, uh, in America to do, you know, to just test how things are over there. But uh, we miss racing in Europe, we really do. Now we're here, it's, uh, it's terrible to be here. I was about to say, Ulf, I mean, it's great that you're here spectating, but isn't there a part of you, because you're so competitive, you obviously won the series last year, that you're thinking, ah, I need to be out there. Yeah, it's, it's, as I said, it's terrible, it's terrible, you know. You, I just want to be in the car and do the, you know, do the burnout and do the run, and it's, it's uh, absolutely terrible to be here without the car. Well, it's terrible not to have Ulf here, but a man that stepped across, not up, from top methanol bragster for this year is Rob Turner. Well, Rob, what a change of circumstances. For years, top methanol dragster, now top methanol funny car. Why? Well, uh, we were um, looking at inside top alcohol, saw the car for sale, and uh, thought it was a good price for a uh, top running car. And uh, I mentioned it to Carmel, and uh, she said we'd take a look at it, and uh, we went from there. Now, how is it? Because you've just had one little try in it up until now. What's your thoughts so far? It's so different. Um, I was uh, not knowing what to expect when I hit the throttle in the burnout. We've only had the car for a week, and uh, it's been real hard work uh, getting it ready. Um, but the car's great. Um, we, uh, I, on the run, where the fuel shut off, is on the dragster is where the fire bottles are and uh, hit that and let a fire bottle off so uh, I just won't be doing that again. <laughs> I'll tell you what experience is a great teacher isn't it? Yeah that's right uh, but driving these cars has to be second nature you, you can't think about anything so that's why uh, I went for the fuel shut off you know where it was in the dragster and uh, hit the fire bottles. <laughs> now, have you noticed up until now the difference in wheelbase? Because, of course, with this car, a hell of a lot shorter, always classed as a bit of a white knuckle ride. Yeah, that's right. Um, you have to put a lot more input into a funny car and uh, a lot harder as well. You know, the, the weight of the steering is fighting against you. You know, it, it doesn't want to go straight when it's uh, gone out of line, you know, so uh, there's a lot more input from that and uh, but there are um, advantages uh, from uh, for instance uh, at least I can see what's going on with the engine now uh, in the dragster when the crew are doing something you're not sure but at least I can see exactly what's going on that's one of the advantages of a front engine car Well, great to see the Turner boys in top methanol funny car. Number one qualifier was Dan Larson, a fantastic time of 5.79. That's nigh on personal best from the guys from Denmark. In round one, he did take out Rob Turner, which means he gets a buy in the semi due to the odd lot field. Jürgen Nagel actually got through against Danny Bellio, and he was supposed to be up against Arvid Grodem in the semi. Now, this is Dan Larson. Uh, in the first of our semi-finals, it's going to be a buy run, John, due to the odd lot field. Yeah, it is, and it's been a bit of a, a strange weekend, really, in Top Methanol Funny Car, because not only are we missing Ulf Leanders, but Leif Andreasen, uh, no longer with us in this particular class at the moment. So we're quite a few cars short, and uh, that looks like the blower panel popping on the uh, on the car there. It was a big pop off the start line. Dan Larson has some horrible problems ran really quick in qualifying round one oiled the racetrack had a, an engine fire really nasty one rebuilt it for that run he decided to run it hard just to make sure everything was fixed but unfortunately as you saw there look at that Oof. pop straight off the start line you can even see the butterflies on the injector there sitting slightly askew so there's a very good chance he lifted the blower and uh, a bit of damage on the gtx car there in that semi-final run he is into the final if he can get repaired in time. Yeah, indeed. But uh, interesting the number of safety features there are on these cars these days. I mean, uh, in years gone by, that would have maybe wrecked uh, some bodywork and uh, certainly wrecked the engine. But now the engines, the uh, blowers are strapped to the engines, the panels that come off of the body to prevent the body being hurt. So it's, uh, it's an interesting change 
of the way that we look and look it's after nice, these cars it's nice now. to see it also means that uh, something like that isn't quite as terminal as it previously was so this is the second of our semi-finals uh, this is Arvid Grodem a brand new car for him a new Mustang uh, yep. brought in from the US over the winter up against Jürgen Nagel oh no not again it looks like Arvid's got problems yeah John. he's being pushed back so uh, poor Arvid Grodem from Norway is out so it's going to be Jürgen Nagel on his own and this is a home-built machine, the man from Germany, and uh, takes an easy win and an easy step into the final. Well, Jürgen Nagel had, uh, he's normally uh, pretty good and pretty consistent, Jürgen, but last year, unfortunately, uh, in Germany, he blew the engine to bits in a very, very bad way indeed. And uh, this is his first race back since then. Yeah, indeed, and here's our final, but you will notice that we have no Dan Larson shown as being in the final. The problem is that poor Dan uh, wrecked the engine in that last semi-final run. So it's going to be Jürgen Nagel on his own. Now, I would lay a pound to a penny that uh, Jürgen would rather have an opponent to run against. But uh, Dan Larson, he's had nothing but rotten luck this weekend, has he? Well, Dan Larson was doing really well in testing. He tested a hell of a lot before the weekend even started. Got down into the five sevens again, which is where he wants to be, maybe even quicker. But unfortunately for him, that bang in the semi-final by run, and maybe he wishes that he hadn't have done that. Maybe he wishes he hadn't run in the car really hard. He would have just trickled through to make it to the final. But it's Jürgen Nagel, basically a victory lap. He has been in the finals in FIA races before, but uh, this is the first one he's definitely going to win, and I'm sure he's going to run really hard. He does have a new engine combination for 2010. Like I said, he split the old one all over the racetrack at Hockenheim last summer, and, uh, well, like I said, this is a victory lap, John. Yeah, indeed, and I wonder whether he is going to run hard because he's had a very easy run through here. Danny Bellio didn't show up in the first round, and Arvid Grodem was shut off. So this could be he qualified with a 6.30, well, he is. He's uh, having a victory lap, isn't he? A fast victory lap. Well done to him. 6.28, 227 miles per hour. The win was normally, I mean, without Dan, it was not a real win, you know. So that's, that's bad for Dan and for the spectators as well, you know. I would like to see, uh, you know, both of us to go to the finish line and every uh, 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 Dan can win and I can win, you know, it's a competition. So. Well, Jürgen, very gracious in winning, but uh, he really has paid his dues on the European scene over the last few years, so I'm sure none of the other top methanol funny car races uh, would deny him that first ever FIA win. So that's it for our first round of the FIA European Drag Racing Championship as well, of course, of being the second round of the UEM Drag Bike Championship here in Santa Pod. And I'll tell you what, Abby, the crowds here, and there have been some really, really large crowds here over the weekend, have seen some fantastic action. We've watched Top Methanol Dragster, Top Methanol Funny Car, we've watched Top Fuel Bike, and of course those hot rods that I love, the Pro Modifiers. It's been wonderful, hasn't it? It's been absolutely brilliant, and of course, all of those cars and bikes are going to be battling it out again very soon in Alistaro in Finland. We'll see you then.